So a moment ago, uh, it was including the empty space, the Amazing Spider-Man, and it was choosing empty space AMA or AM. So we have the Kujit with a zip with a one. Let's put these all back to zero because again. Uh, Eddie reminded me that we needed to do something else here. Let's put all of these back to zero. This should be the correct way because I had it in my notes. And the way, the reason that it was also including the empty space was we needed to say wherever there is an empty space, remove it. Wherever there's an A, empty space, remove it. Wherever there is the empty space, remove it. We forgot to put empty spaces in each of these cases so that we do start from the zeroth position, the first letter. Because if we, I didn't test it for the default, but if we did start from one, it would have skipped the first letter of a comic with only the starting from the first, the first letter. So these should be, put these back to zero, and instead it's got to be replace the space, replace the A, and replace the an space. It is in my notes, but I can't see empty spaces in a printout. So make sure these have the word to be replaced plus a space, and these should be back to zero. They should work the same as before. Yes? We can't leave the 1, 3, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, and then when we default, leave it as a zero. Space. That's another way, yeah. That would be just another way of doing something. Another way, yeah. There's so many ways to do the same thing, so that could be a way too. Leave the other ones. Leave all of these with one, but then have default at zero. All right, so this concludes our comic prep function. All of that is to prepare the data that the person typed into the boxes. Testing it one more time. If I do Uh, amazing Spider-Man. Number 300. You can put years if you want. Save. So just to confirm, it is processing all of that. A lot of console output is starting to come out, so I'm going to start to comment out a few things. This is the important one that it still shows this. Our data is being bundled as an object. That other stuff, especially the line 74 or so, I don't need to see that anymore. I don't need to see the raw data. I've confirmed that my cases work. I don't need to see that. So the, I'm going to comment out a few things. You can do this if you want. First, I'm going to comment out line 74. Now this is technically a multi-line comment, so you will have to comment both of those lines. If you broke it like me, or you can do, of course, the multi-line comments this way. I don't need that raw data output anymore. I don't need these consoles about which was it anymore, the, and, uh, whatever. I just want to have a slightly cleaner output. So this is optional, but I just want to see that. I want to see one output. One more thing before we wrap up this function. Uh, we have console log comic displays the whole JSON object. It's kind of redundant. JavaScript object notation object. The whole JSON object. Okay, so if you just say comic, well, that's the whole bundle of data with all of the fields for practice. I only want to display 
the particular um, title, the name of the comic. What do I write here to only display the name of the comic? Only the name of the comic. I only want to console log the name of the comic. Say that again. Based on the object that we've already created. The comic object. Comic dot title. Yeah. If this displays the whole object, I only want one field of the object. So name the object dot its field. Title. Comment. Publisher. Whatever that dynamic data is, it's stored in this field. We reference its field attached to that object, the property of that object. So keep this in mind because this is the whole point of bundling this data together as a JSON object. We've created an object which has these properties that we've created. Later on, once we get this back into our Visual Studio project, we're going to add some new fields. You don't have to do this now, but later on we're going to have the fields of um, picture, we'll think of what it is later, and barcode. Right, So we can create new fields later. We won't do that yet. And so our object will have new fields that then we can reference comic.barcode because we're going to set up a way to scan the barcode of the comic. That will be stored as well. We cannot do that at all right now because we're not in a we're not in a Cordova project. We're not in a Visual Studio project, so we have no functionality to use the camera. But the functionality, the flexibility of this is that then we can add fields later in our development to our object. This is an example here where this is optional, but it's nice if you do this. Looks nice, not so messy. Okay, so that save button is um, currently activating function prep. Which runs our prep function, of course. We'll get outside of that prep comic function, and we'll define a new one, a new function, fn save comic. We were working with prep comic directly because we need to prepare the data. That 20 lines or whatever that is of code, 50 lines, though that code is just to prepare the comic. That's not actually to save the comic to the database. Actually, it is um, save comic function, which is the one that should be executed when we click the button to save. We're going to click the button to save, then we're going to prepare the comic, then we're going to save the comic. So we've got a new function, save comic. Let's replace the event handler down here with save comic. So very important here, change your submit event handler to function save comic. 
we need to do several things in the process of saving. One of those things was preparing the data. We were preparing the data directly with the button just to make sure that code worked. We then need to <coughs> do, do the rest. So we're still on the event of the, of the form being submitted. There's a default event that happens. We're passing that event into the function. We're preventing the default event. Inside of this function, we're creating a variable, so it only exists for the duration that this function runs. This will be a comic equal to function prep comic. All of those lines that preceded now will run. Up there, all of that will run. Capture the data, prepare the data, return the data, and store it into a variable. So we should confirm, we have confirmed that the prep stuff worked. I'm going to comment those consoles out and instead console out the current a comic. So this would uh, output the data of that comic, console, log, what does this do here? What is this line doing? Only the ID field of that comic object, yeah. So let's save it and run this. Everything should work basically the same as before. But now we're going to write then several dozen lines of code here, just like we wrote several dozen lines of code up there. That was just to prepare the comic. Now it's actually to save the data. I just want to confirm this function runs. This function is showing my object. This function is showing the ID of this object. Kenneth, you can grab the code from the network folder, call pouch, whatever, copy. That's what part is. We need to put it in a folder with the rest of the jQuery stuff, however. All right, so I'm going to run this just to confirm. It's working how I expect. Again, I'm going to save the Amazing Spider-Man number 300, putting a year, publisher. At a certain point, I will just put quick data, but I'm just confirming. So it should be showing that now on line 128 or so, it is showing my object, and it showed only the ID, line 129. Line 129. So I commented out the previous console, and I write the console output there. After that part, we'll have db.put. This is the pouch db command to put something in the database. We created the database early on in our code. It's just been hanging around there, hasn't done much. Now we're actually going to put something into the database. We're going to put a comic 
It bundled all the data together as a JSON object, put all of that into the database. It has a unique ID and various fields. Comma. Most pouch functions, most pouch methods, commands, have two possibilities. You're trying to put the data into the database. Two possibilities. It went into the database or there was some error. So we will find this syntax very commonly here. We'll have a pouch, pouch db command method to put the data in the database. Two possibilities. Two possibilities to handle in a callback function. So the comma here will be a callback function to deal with successfully placing the data or a failure in inputting the data. Later, when we try to retrieve the data, db.get, we're going to try to get data out of the database. <coughs> Possibilities are that it succeeded or that it failed. Later, we'll try to update the data. Possibilities mm -hmm. are that it succeeded in, updated, in updating or failed. So here we say function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, a callback function. Inside of these parentheses we have the parameters of either failure or success. If you read the documentation of PouchDB, because it's written by different people, some of the documentation is a little inconsistent here and there. Some examples of the code will have it say function failure success, some will say uh, you know bad good, some will say you know wrong or okay. These objects, these, these parameters here can be named anything. They can be named kitty and cat. But the first one is the failure result and the second one is the success result. <clears throat> to keep it simple, failure, success. To keep it memorable, that is. Simple would be typing less. So we're trying to put the comic. There's going to be a callback function. Some function is going to run when we try to put it with either a failure or success result. It would be what? Break. Say that again. From somewhere, yeah. So I'm keeping it consistent. Failure, success. Mm -hmm. Curly braces right there because then we're going to break that. And a little note. End of dot put. We'll probably have other stuff happen here. There's going to be lots of lines of code. So we have yes. Uh, in DB we should not close it because now we have open two parameters to one close. It is. It is closed. You just have to confirm here. See how this was before I changed it. Parentheses right here. You see how they're red? There is a closing parentheses, and then there is a closing and opening curly brace, and then there is okay. another opening and closing. We have it It was there. No, we, we have two branches now. Yes. Three branches. Two is closed, one is not closed. Which one? They're all okay, now it's closed. Yeah. Yes. Open and close. Well, now it's now it Open and close. Open and close. Alright, so then I'm going to break those curly braces into multiple lines. Because here we'll have an, an if-else statement. If it was a failure, let's figure out what went wrong. Else, it was a success, so do something about that. This is all happening inside of the callback function at the moment that we're doing put. That's why I put this right here. We're going to lose track of what is this, what is this closing again? We're going to lose track of it. 
because we're going to write dozens of lines of code here from the possibilities of, of failure or success. So comment here, this is a close of my dot put. And then my function, if else. This is also going to be a few lines of code. Might as well write and of if else. Just to see this in action, we'll do a little console output. Console log in quotes will say failed. Colon space plus failure. Else console log. Did. <coughs> Success. Oh, and one more thing. The thing that checks um, what happened, if something happened, it either failed or succeeded. We're going to check for failure. If we detected a failure, output what was the failure message or else we didn't detect the failure. We must have detected a success. So I'll put the success message to the console. If failure. If after trying to put the comic into the database, we detected a failure, let us know in the console. Or else it was a success, because we only have two possibilities. So I'll put that to the console. Let's give that a try. Let's see if we can get it, if we can if we can trigger a success result, let's see if we can trigger a failure result, and then I'll show you how to trigger a success and failure for testing. So let's try that. Now try to save data. Try to save those comics. It will now start to try to save the data actually to the database. Let me confirm mine works, and then we'll see what's going on. So I will save a real comic for the moment. So it automatically does the breaking with the registration to a month ago. In a sense. Yeah, it's it's about Yeah, it has, it has the put and all of that. It, that. That's the point of using a library, because it has all of these possibilities. We had to kind of do it manually before. And I'm sure someone's created some sort of JavaScript library that is a login, logout system and did the work for us. But, you know, doing it the hard way builds character. Click Save on that. I get an output here. Um, succeeded. Object. Object. Um, to to cause a um, so you're going to have to type in the same thing exactly to force an error I'm going to try to type the same thing and try to save again failed mm -hmm. status 409 conflict message document update conflict I saved spider-man 300 one time already I'm trying to save it again pouch DB has built in you're trying to save the same thing are you trying to update it maybe I wanted to update the comment then uh, first appearance I'm still gonna get an error because I'm trying to save again ID 
AMA 300. We will see, of course, how to update the data, but right now we're only in the mode of let's save the data. If I have, you know, number 301, everything else exactly the same, number 301, if I try to save that, it'll let me succeed. If I try to save 301 again, but with something else, everything else could be completely different. But the title and the number are the same, which creates my ID, which causes a failure. Here's other ways to cause a failure. I'm gonna, it's issue number 300 from 1989 from Marvel, and it has whatever. Well, first of all, it's going to detect that there's an empty field, so it won't let me. But that, that'll be something built into Pouch as well, if you try to save something without a valid ID. Uh, question? It's saving this in, in the storage of the browser on the person's computer. So it is saving it in a permanent place in the person's device. Can, can you make an original database with all the comics, for example, so we can just tell what was taken off of everything that exists? Yeah, we can set it up that we already have a list of something of, of the things already saved so that it, it'll say that one's already there. Now, to see where this is saving, in Chrome. Now let's look again at the application tab. <clears throat> so we'll see where this is being saved. Application inside of index DB by sequence. You may have to refresh down here. So look at the application tab of Chrome inside index DB storage you will see the My Comics database of Pouch, different ways to see the data by sequence. Zero with comic that I saved. And then values, objects on the right, which you can open up and then see. There's the comment I wrote, dot comment. There's the publisher, dot publisher. There's the year. <coughs> There's the ID. It's with doc ID revision, AMA 300. Revision number one. I saved another comic. Amazing Spider Man number 301. I didn't write a comment that time. It's AMA 301, revision one. Okay. Thank you. Says no, it's giving it to us in, in the sequence that I that I saved it. If I save number 299, it will put it after the ones that exist. Because right now it's showing it to us by sequence of insertion. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, that part, yes. So here, all new objects come in order that I added them, but yes, the object, it's showing it to us. By each field, alphabetical comment year. But the third one that I added was a lower number than that one. AMA 299, AMA 301. So is that is that working for people? Are you seeing some result? Anyone having any trouble? So we have the put method, could be a failure, could be a success, simply output. When you see the, the error message, again, to force an error message, one possibility is I'm trying to save something exactly the same. I'm going to try again, Amazing Spider-Man 299. I'm going to try to save the same one, get an error. It thinks, are you trying to update it? or you're trying to replace one, one already exists, and you get back a result in JSON format. Curly braces, field, 
uh, or key colon value, comma, key <coughs> colon value. So what you could do here, console log failed failure object, that's like a representation of, of uh, a comic. We've got a JSON object we created, putting it into a variable, an object. Here we've got an object with dot status, dot, com, uh, dot name, dot message. So for fun, if you put failed, failure dot message, it will only tell you what the message field is, document update conflict. So if I do again number 300, which I know exists if I save it, document update conflict. So this is an object. Failure is an object with these various fields. It's kind of odd that it doesn't show you what the fields are for success, but I know that this one has at least dot OK as a field of OK. I save a new comic, number 303, I succeeded true. So now that object's OK field is output from a successful save. Now just for testing purposes, I'm going to go back to my input field where I had a required for the name of the comic. I'm going to remove required. Don't do this, but just let me show you this. I'm going to remove required for title, so now it won't complain if I try to save it without a title. I want to do this because if I put number number 12, uh, year 19, whatever, publisher, Disney, if I fill everything else except for um, except for title, um, that, that's a possibility that could also happen, an empty sort of title. Let me also remove the required for the number, just for testing. Let's say I don't put in a title, I don't put in a number, but I fill in the other things. Now, pouch itself is going to give a failure. These two or HTML error checking things required, which are really nice. They, they help you uh, have the user type in something. But let's say we never put those required attributes. Now Pouch is saying, failed, status 412. Message, ID is required for puts. There is no ID. I didn't type anything. We didn't, you know, I didn't type anything to title or number, so those are blank fields. You cannot have a blank ID. That, that would be terrible, because how are we going to refer to the data in the database without an ID? We need an ID to refer to the data. So there's a whole bunch of errors that we can look up on the PouchDB website. We saw 409, we saw 412, there's other ones, other possible errors. So that's why we've got this here. If we have a success, if we have a failure, do something about it. Right here. If we have a success, if we have a failure, do something about it. We're just setting up the skeleton to, to check for success or for failure. We then need to further refine this to deal with success and failure. Question? Okay. So because the required attribute is saving us, that um, that is one possibility taken care of. But there could be possibilities where the required attribute of the input field is not detected. Maybe for some reason the, per the person's version of Android, maybe they're on Android 2.0, and it doesn't detect the required attribute. So we should still be redundant and detect a failure that the person didn't fill in those fields. So what we need to do inside of this failure block is a switch. Let's create a switch block. There could be a failure. 
and that will have a status. Failure has a bunch of fields. One is status. So we're going to say switch failure dot status. So here will give us a number, 409, 502, whatever, the, the list of possible errors. So we'll have cases to handle that. Case of 409, something happens here. Case of 412, something else happens here. And it's a good idea to always have a default for troubleshooting. We, there could be a case that we didn't expect. What was that status that didn't trip our cases? Alright, so a 409 error ID already exists. And let's put this into the console. <coughs> yes, the PouchDB uh, API screen, all of this information is what does 409 mean, what does 412 mean, etc. 412 is a, um, is a possibility of an error where the ID is empty. <coughs> These console logs are just appearing for um, for us, the developer. Let's do an alert to the user. Title and number cannot be empty. So a person is somehow trying to fill in the, that comic. They didn't put a title. They didn't put an ID. That required attribute should catch that, but if it doesn't, we have here some redundancy. We're alerting the user, title and number cannot be empty. For default, Say something like unknown error. Contact the developer. Yes, it's a simple JavaScript pop-up box. Later with jQuery Mobile, we can make a nicer looking one, but this will work just fine for our purposes.
an alert for the 409 type of error could be Comic already exists. Okay, so uh, just to kind of test that a little bit more, uh, I, I don't have a way to, to trip 412 unless I turn off required. If you want to fully test this, you need to go back to the form and remove both of those required attributes. This is to fully test that we hit case 412, those both required attributes in the form. So if I fill in anything else, title and number cannot be empty. So that's one way to confirm <coughs> case 412. I'm going to leave those required attributes, but that's how you can confirm 412. Yes. All of these come from the pouchdb.com website because this is all in operation of, of pouch. db.put, we're putting something into the database. We're now in the world of pouchdb, so we would get those numbers out of pouchdb.com. Four oh nine is that the ID is the same. So obviously now, if I try to save the same comic, um, Amazing Fantasy fifteen. I don't even have to fill in the year and stuff, but I will now that I have the real database. Marvel first Spider Man save. So I hadn't saved that one before. Success is true. If I try to save the same one, now it'll pop up. Comic already exists. So that's what our switch is doing, detecting some possible errors. Now, we need the unique ID for anything we save into Pouch. So now let's say I'm, I'm going to save the Amazing Spider-Man, number 15, from 1964, probably. No comment. I'm going to save a brand new comic. Comic already exists. No, I haven't typed it yet. But wait a minute. Object of this new comic, AMA15 ID. And the one I saved a moment ago, Amazing Fantasy 15, AMA 15. These are different comics, different years, different, same number, different years, different publishers, whatever. It's a different comic. One is Amazing Fantasy 15. This is The Amazing Spider-Man. But because we created an ID where we strip out the word the, and we take the first three letters, now we're going to have a conflict with anything called, anything that starts with amazing. Amazing Adventures, number 99, 1954, from Dell. The, um, not 99, 15, of course. Amazing Adventures, 15. It already exists, because it's, again, AMA 15. AMA 15 was an ID originally reserved for Amazing Fantasy 15. Anything else that starts with amazing and has that same number is going to cause a conflict. We could increase the length. Here's various ways to fix it. We could increase the length of this. Take 
you know, four letters or five letters of the first letters. But still, amazing fantasy, amazing Spider-Man, amazing adventures, amazing etc. How many words do I need, to, how many letters do I need to take before I know that it doesn't conflict with something that exists? So it doesn't matter how many letters I take. There's going to be possibilities that I, don't, I, I didn't think of. So we're going to devise a way here so that it, if it detects that I'm trying to use the same ID that existed, it will let me save a new version. So under this failure condition, we have the possibility that it is trying to reuse the same ID. Let's write some code to randomly attach another number to that ID. That'll then definitely create a new ID, won't conflict with a previous ID. So inside of this case, I'm going to comment out that alert. Most likely it will not be a case that it is a duplicate. Here's what we need to do. This ID that we're currently trying to save, if we get to case 49, it is confirmed that we're trying to reuse an ID that already exists. So we're going to check what that ID is and just add a few random numbers to the end. In that case, it will definitely be a new ID and it'll work. So comment out that alert var id temp dot comic dot underscore id so when we're trying to save the comic we click the save button it prepared the data it's stored it in that variable. Let's create a variable where we extract what that ID is, saving it temporarily. Comma, because on the next line, then we're going to say ID temp random. Random number. Math dot round we're gonna make up some number and we're gonna generate a random number and we're gonna round it up or down doesn't matter I think we've talked about math dot floor and math dot seal before doesn't matter if we go up or down we just need a, a rounded number a whole number I don't need a fractional number so inside of that math dot random Let's generate a random number, round it up or down. This is going to be a fraction. So times 99. Think of a random number between 1 and 99. Round it up or down. Most likely it'll go up. We probably won't get number 0. Even with a 0, that's fine. So here we have 99 possible possibilities. So if I'm trying to save Amazing Spider-Man number 1, it won't conflict with Amazing Fantasy number one. It's it's gonna then make it. We'll see in a moment. It'll make it amazing. It'll make it AMA one five twelve. It'll put a random number so that it doesn't conflict with AMA fifteen because AMA fifteen slot was already taken.
So it is assigned a random number just for the ID purposes? Just for the ID. Yes, updating will be different. Right now we're just simply trying to insert into the database. Later updating won't even trigger any of this because it'll be a db dot it'll be a db dot update. Yes. Well, then, uh, if we didn't have a placeholder for required, that would be four twelve. If, if they didn't type anything into the title and the number, that would create an empty ID, and it would trigger this error. We're dealing with what, what happens if you're trying to save a comic that conflicts with the same ID. Amazing Fantasy 15 slot was, is AMA 15. That's already taken. If I'm trying to save then Amazing Spider-Man 15, AMA 15 is taken. So now we'll get AMA 1577. Well, now we That is true. That is a different thing we'll have to deal with also. Doing this will override that, that we could save Amazing Fantasy XV twice. Yes, that will happen. So that's something to deal with. We'll get to that. Ultimately, the point of this is to, once we've got this random number, uh, we, can, we can say a comic dot underscore id is equal to id temp plus id temp random. So we, we extracted what the id in question is. We generated a random number. We're going to reinsert into our JSON data the id field the original ID, which is conflicting, plus the new random number. So that would create AMA 1598. Yeah, that was that was Kenneth's question. So if we Try to save exactly Amazing Fantasy 15 again. Yes, it will let us save two copies of it. At the moment, we're we're trying to decide which is the greater, which is the bigger problem. If you're trying to save Amazing Fantasy number one, Amazing Spider-Man number one, Amazing this number one, Amazing Adventure number one, I think that's a much bigger problem at the moment. It will there will only be one copy of something AMA one. I think that's a much bigger problem than accidentally saving Amazing Fantasy 1 twice, which is something that we will deal with a little later. Yes? We could just write the string and the string that turns the database. There will be a way, yes. Once we, once we start to save stuff in the database, we have a way to check, does it exist? And if it's the exact same strings, if it's the exact same thing, then yes, you are trying to save the same thing twice. Um, so we see here that when we write our own apps, we have to account for all of this stuff. Um, I'm guiding us toward errors that exist, and you guys are also discovering them. That's good. I know there's going to be some of these problems, so I'm already guiding us to some answers, and you're seeing that there's going to be other issues. That's good. We're thinking like that because we have to be in charge of it all now. I download an app from the App Store, and hopefully the programmer figured it all out, and the app works. When we do it ourselves, we have to figure out all the possibilities. So ultimately here we get a brand new ID, which then that actually, db.put, this version of this comic with the new ID. We already put Amazing Fantasy 15, now we're trying to put Amazing Spider-Man 15, generate a new ID for Amazing Fantasy 15, and put it into the database. If we test this,
Amazing Spider-Man 15. I know I have Amazing Fantasy 15. Click Save. Um, okay, it's still showing the error, but it is working because we had the error before the switch, so it definitely shows an error. We should have these errors um, we don't we don't need this first fail we have these failures inside of the cases and it it is working it's just it keeps saying it already exists it's working because if you look in your uh, application by sequence refresh that down here it is saving more in the application, and then you look at the bottom, you have a little refresh button down at the very bottom. So I previously did have in my case the sixth comic that I saved was Amazing Fantasy 15, AMA 15. A moment ago, I tried to save Amazing Spider-Man number 15. It's a different comic. And it made AMA 15 and 12. So the errors do pop up, but it is working just because our errors were set up without this extra step, which then does show the issue that came up of, okay, I'm saving Amazing Spider Man 15 again. Now that's AMA 15 55. And I save it again, Amazing Spider Man 15, AMA 15 22. So for the moment, the greater good is that we are able to save uh, comics with the same ID. Uh, Amazing Fantasy 15, Amazing Spider-Man 15, Amazing Donald Duck number 15, because all of them would have had AMA 15. We will deal with what are these duplicates a little later. We're going to be able to delete from the database and all of that. For the moment, I think the greater good is being able to save more comics that share the same ID. <coughs> Completely unrelated comics. Um, there was an Amazing Spider-Man 15 in 1964. There was an Amazing Spider-Man 15 in like 2002. And there was an Amazing, an Amazing Spider-Man 15 like in 2016. So there's been more than one copy in the real world of Amazing Spider-Man 15. And I think it's more important to, to do that. We could also incorporate the year. The year could be part of what the ID is. So we could create an ID of the var in title plus the var in number plus the, the val in year. That's other ways to do this. There's no wrong answer. That could save some conflict. It's just different ways to do it. Let's uh, take one more break to see uh, to see if it all works and such. Uh, it's eight sixteen. We'll be back at eight uh, twenty six.